It is 5.01, um, Monday, November 18th, 2024. Uh, we are going to have three meetings tonight. One is going to be um, the meeting of the Copley Trust Board. The second meeting will be the Board of uh, Tobacco and Liquor Control. And our third meeting will be the um, Morristown Select Board. Um, so I'd like to call to order the um, meeting of the Copley Trust. And the uh, first item on our agenda tonight is to approve the minutes of 8524. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 8524. And do we have a second? I'll second it. All right. Um, is there any um, is there any discussion? Don, did you see anything? I did not. Laura? Nope. Okay. So we have a motion by Richard and a second by uh, Richard. And um, I would like to tonight uh, do a roll call vote since we have two of our members on Zoom. So all those in favor? Richard? Aye. Richard? Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I am aye as well. So the motion carries on the minutes. Uh, new business, uh, review and discuss the quotes uh, provided by Karen Otterino for the Co Copley Country Club funding request. Karen, would you like to speak to this? Sure. Um, uh, and what I'll do is ask you to use our mic and just um, give us your name. I'm Karen Otterino. I'm chair of the board at Copley Country Club. Um, we uh, looked for other contractors to bid on this job, and we could not find any. Okay. And then um, we started getting into a time crunch because um, after investigation, we found that the deck was in much worse repair than we had initially thought. And we are very fortunate that we didn't have an accident this year with people on the deck. So um, the contractor has started. Um, we have paid the initial, um, we've paid $26,000 out of our money market account and we're prepared if the Copley Fund does, uh, does not, uh, uh, approve the um, proposal, we're, we're prepared to go to local banks to get a loan to cover the cost of um, the job because it just needed to be done. It was dangerous. We were worried with um, weight. If we got a lot of snow this summer, there could be a collapse. It could, it could jeopardize the structure of the clubhouse itself. So we just had to go ahead and do it before uh, that road isn't maintained. So we wanted to get in and get the work finished before the snow flies because getting dumpsters and materials and such delivered if that road is covered in snow is just going to be a nightmare. So that's the situation as it stands. Um, the, the work is I think probably about 80% finished. Um, we are waiting for um, the springtime to replace the railings on it because we're trying to find a painting contractor because soffits and um, the, the posts on the porch all need to be painted. They need to be sanded and scraped and painted. And um, so the contractor said he would come back in the spring and replace all the railings and everything on the deck after we've had a chance to get somebody in there and do the paint work. Hopefully we've... Uh, <laughs> We've had three people bid on the jobs and um, they've been out, outrageous. I, you know, for, we had one quote was $29,000 to paint under the soffits. It's not a big, it's not that big a job. I, I don't know whether it's because it's not a big job, they don't want to do it, and, but what have you. Anyway, I'd be happy to um, entertain any questions if you have on the, the estimate. Um, apparently, there was a lot of the decking that had rotted and wasn't even attached to the building in the one part that is most um, susceptible to the elements when it's open. The covered porch was fine, but we had to replace everything. So essentially, we 
took it down to everything, replaced it with um, pressure treated, uh, sistered all the existing joints with pressure treated, I should say. And, um, and there were some places that the pressure, the existing stuff had to be taken out altogether and just totally re rebuilt. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think that, um, as you know, uh, based on our minutes, um, the board did make a motion to accept the application uh, for funds not to exceed 65000 So the process that we go through is that we made the motion to accept um, the application and approve the funding, and then we take a three-month vacation to consider all the aspects. Um, one of the uh, one of the codicils to this was that we wanted more than one bid to just for a comparison purpose and I appreciate you trying to find a contractor to do that. I understand that it's a busy time for everybody at this point and um, finding people to do any work on a time on a more immediate basis is difficult so but I do appreciate your particularly appreciate your efforts to do that. Um, I would open it up to the board to ask any questions or um, make any comments. Uh, Richard, would you like to start? Do you still want the $65,000? We would like the $65,000. Right, thank you. Yes, okay. <laughs> this is the only bit that you got, it's for $65,000. <laughs> This the the one that we had previously come to the Copley Fund with a few years ago. Um, the only contractor that we could find to do it gave us a price, and um, it was thirty thousand dollars more than this one. So um, this contractor came in and said, "We don't have to re." Uh, that one involved building a whole structure to support the roof of the the porch. Um, this contractor said, you know, the pillars can stay in place. We don't have to resupport it. It's fine. It's all, you know, so that there was a whole section of the work that didn't need to be done. And so we thought that was a bonus. <laughs> sure. Um, especially in this, I mean, we can't, we can't find people to do work. We had the village had offered us some beautification money to redo the floors in the um, clubhouse and somebody came and bid and we accepted the bid and approved it and the village approved it and then they never showed up so yeah that was emory floor so yeah it's really really difficult to find um people that are willing to work okay. i guess if you have Big big jobs like in stone maybe, but did you have any other questions? I just I just would like another. I mean, I understand your position, but it'd be nice. To, I don't have any idea what the scope of work is really for that job, so I don't have anything to compare it to. That's my question. Is this? But I appreciate your comment about the other mm -hmm. previous bid being significantly more. Yeah. So I did I did take a moment, and because um, uh, Mr. Sargent is our is our long time member on this board has been a revolving door of uh, select board uh, members. So I did ask Dick um, if it had been customary uh, in prior uh, times if they sought more than one bid uh, as a protocol and that has not been their uh, mode of operation up to this point. Um, that's not to say that um, in the future um, that, that could be very much a requirement, assuming that somebody would, else would bid on this. Right. Don, did you have anything that you'd like to add? Well, I guess you, you've kind of alluded to it, but it's a question for Dick. Um, Dick Sargent, are, are you comfortable going forward with this uh, decision with only the, the one bid? Yeah. I mean, she explained to us that you couldn't get it out of it. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking of, in, you know, Chris has alluded to this, just thinking of past precedent. And, uh, but if you're comfortable with it, that's great. Um, Laura, do you have anything that you'd like to add to the conversation? Well, um, just that um, I understand 
the problem with getting quotes right now. I just I I waited for two years to get a garage built, so it was just built. Um, and in that time, you know, everything went up over thirty percent. So the quote seems reasonable to me. Um, I think it's unfortunate we can't get another, but I I totally agree with. Um, they don't want to be bothered with the little stuff. They've got big houses, and now that it's winter, so uh, again, is legally if um, if it's legally okay, we can get you know we're legally all right to go ahead. I would be fine with it, but we do need to just you know be careful of precedent setting here. Okay. Um, I will share that um, currently in that Copley Trust, um, as of September 30, um, there, one of the questions we had in our uh, previous meeting in August is what the value of the, um, of the trust uh, available funds would, would be uh, when we came back here in November and currently there as well as of September 30th. There's $80,743.65, so there's more than enough funds to fund this project. So um, is there any other comments or anything else that anybody would like to say? I guess uh, my apologies for coming late. Just lost track of time. Uh, but I would like to recuse myself on the right. appearance of a conflict of interest. I didn't think that the first time came through, but my thought about it, I, I think I would be better for me to do that. So if the record would show that. Okay. Um, so as of our meeting on August 5th, uh, the motion was made and carried um, to authorize expenditure of $65,000. I would call for another motion to, um, to expend the funds to Copley Country Club. And um, so I would entertain a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to um, expend the funds for the Copley Country Club for the replacement of the deck for the total of $65,000. Okay, and is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Is there any other further discussion? I'm just gonna, I think I better join George here because I'm a member of the golf course too. Okay, so with four of us voting, we have a quorum, so that would be appropriate, Dick, if okay. you'd like to. Um, so again, um, I will take, uh, with no further, uh, I guess, conversation, discussion, um, I'll take a of the board. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. Richard? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. So we will expend the funds. And Richard, will you see to it that uh, a check is cut? I will. Okay. Appreciate it. And thank you, Karen. I just have one question. Okay. Um, I know it's customary or it's required that we put um, some kind of signage to indicate that the, the right. funds, there's the big monument in front of the clubhouse. Does that suffice or would you prefer a, another little plaque somewhere on the deck that says that the deck was uh, made possible by the proceeds of the Alexander Copley Fund? Right. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you want, yeah. we'll do the, okay. Yeah. So as I, I read the will, um, it seems sort it seems implied um, that there would be some sort of direct um, plaque or um, monument there uh, specifically attached or by the by the deck. Okay. Yeah. So I just that was, know if, and, the, if and, the memorial that had his name on it in front of it was suffice because that's good no. for the whole thing. But. Right. But when you get ready, I'd, I'd like to read what you're going to say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. And um, thank you for bringing that up because that was on my stuff to do list mm -hmm. here after you after we approved the uh, financial piece. So thank you. And, and then Dick, maybe in the springtime when we get it, you can see where you. Oh, well, I don't need to get into that. I just want to make sure the wording, the wording is correct. Is right. okay. Yeah, he has a I'll big long what, name. What's off from the um, pump house? We have a plaque on the pump. Okay, house. that would probably be a good so guide. So I'll copy the wording. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, okay. thanks. Thanks very much, Karen. Um, the second item under new business is um, remembering Gloria Wing. And um, I've asked uh, Richard to maybe speak to her 
a long tenure as both a civil servant here, a civic servant here in her professional career. So Richard, if you would um, like to, um, I'll turn the floor over to you. So it, it was a great pleasure um, uh, being uh, with Gloria. Um, I was thinking that I would say I worked with her, but uh, her personality was so strong, I worked for her quite often. Yeah. And, I think um, a lot of us felt that way. She, um, I saw her play basketball when she was in high school. That gives you an idea of how long uh, she's been around. That was a, not a very <clears throat> uh, athletic game that the girls played back then, but uh, she was a good player. And it amazed me to learn recently that she was the valedictorian of her class in high school. Um, she always had the best uh, thoughts for the community. That was uh, her main goal, to just do things for Morrisville and Morristown. And um, in uh, her, uh, I heard uh, that uh, when she would uh, come to see Howard Menash, his first words were, well, where's my checkbook? <laughs> he, she, uh, she had a way with people. Uh, she, you, you, she'd bring in some idea in, maybe you weren't on board, but before the meeting was over, you just couldn't say no to her because uh, what she was up to was legitimate. And I'm so glad that they renamed this uh, building where the town clock is the wing center after her for all that she did for that that particular project. So uh, I, as I say, I have fond memories of her and um, this community will be indebted to the efforts that she made over her lifetime for a long, long time. And I think it's uh, important to also mention that um, as the director of nursing at Copley Hospital for several decades in her um, her path in terms of her professional career played a big role in mm -hmm. um, the welfare and health of this community as well. Right. I can't agree more with that. Is there anyone else um, on the board uh, this evening that would like to speak? I guess I would just say um, I've known about Gloria since the day I moved to Morrisville. Um, my wife at the time was the director of LCPC and she was very involved Gloria um, I know Barb had the and Richard I know you know Barb Farr and Barb had the, the highest regard for for Gloria and worked very closely with her for several decades actually mm -hmm. yeah so I would echo a lot of what what's already been said um, I think it would be certainly appropriate um, uh, Gloria's service was yesterday held at the community church here in Morrisville, and uh, her private burial took place today um, at Pleasant View Cemetery. Um, if you would um, uh, join me in a moment of uh, reflection and a remembrance uh, for Gloria Way. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have um, a responsibility um, of this board to um, now fill a vacant board position. Um, so I think that there is a protocol uh, in place to, to do that. Um, Judy, would you like to speak to that in terms of advertising it on our website and um, making a public notice to um, fill that position? Yes, yeah, so thanks, Chris. So uh, on the website, uh, morristownvt.gov, if you go to uh, departments, go to government, or yeah, go to departments, um, there is a, under government, I'm sorry, under government, there is a spot for board vacancies. There's a form there that you can fill out I get notification of the form and we'll be bringing it back to the Copley Trust for another meeting um, to interview or talk with candidate candidates. Okay, and we would advertise this in the normal places? Yeah, I'll put, a, it, yeah, I'll put a, it on Front Porch Forum, Facebook, on our website, and 
possibly a news and citizens. Okay, with an application deadline. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions about that? Is that limited to Morrisville residents, or can you be an Elmore resident and apply? I believe it's Morrisville residents. Would you concur with that, Richard? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Um, the the will is very specific about where this money can go to and and such. Um, it also speaks to um, the public trustees as well. Um, is there um, any other um, community comments uh, regarding the Copley Trust? I guess my only question, Chris, is um, besides the members of the select board, are we restricted to two at-large trustees? So um, the will says two from the community and the select board. Okay. And at the time of the will, the select board was uh, three people. So uh, the clout of the two community members has been greatly diminished by the fact you now are five uh, people on the board. But, uh, you know, I th I've thought about that, but I just think that probably the, the best thing is that the board it, in its entirety be on the committee and, right. and maybe two, because he specifically says two outside people. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which leads me to a final comment before we um, adjourn this meeting. Um, I think it would behoove this, um, this board to have a work session to take a look at a number of things. Um, it would not be necessary. I mean, obviously wouldn't necessarily be to approve an application, but um, I think that a conversation about updating the application, um, making sure that it really is complete and gives as much information in terms of what the expectations are. I think that we could talk about an investment policy. Um, we could talk about a subcommittee for pre-screening applications so that we make sure that an applicant doesn't come before the board and find out that they don't qualify, um, those kinds of things. And if the um, rest of the committee or board would uh, concur with that, maybe sometime after the first of the year, we could um, warn a meeting maybe an hour before a select board meeting and gather and have a work session to go over some of these things if you think that's appropriate. Chris, when you say application, you were talking about an application for funds or an application to fill the seat? The application for funds. funds. Okay. And a pre-screening for an application for funds. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Richard, would you concur with that thought? Too? I think it's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. George? I would. Okay, Richard. Yeah, after what we had last meeting, I think that's a great idea. Okay, Don. Yes, I agree. Okay, Laura. Laura, are you? Muted. Laura. Okay, Laura's muted. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's no other business uh, coming before the board. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Um, is there any discussion? So with a motion by George and a second by Richard, um, calling the Sergeant. 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 Richard Sergeant. Sergeant. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll pull the board on adjournment. Richard? Yes. George? Aye. Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. I myself. So um, the um, copy board trust meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So good evening. Um, we will uh, begin um, our first meeting of two with the uh, Liquor and Tobacco Control Board. Um, it is Monday, November 18th, 2024 at 5.30. So I'd like to call the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control to order. Um, are there any agenda changes or additions? No. Okay. Um, we have a set of minutes to approve that are dated October 21st, 2024. Um, has everybody had a chance to read them? 
All right. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of October 21. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control of October 21, 2024. Okay. Is there a second? Second. George. Okay. Is there any discussion about the minutes? George? No. Richard? No. Don? No. Laura? Okay. So, uh, hearing no discussion, we have a, a motion and a second. A motion by Richard and a second by George. I'm going to pull the board on approval. All those in favor say aye. George? Aye. Richard? Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I am aye as well. Um, motion is passed and minutes are approved. Um, we have uh, no liquor license applications this evening. Um, I don't believe we have any tobacco license applications, but we do have a catering permit request uh, for Black Diamond Barbecue LLC. Um, the, uh, I think we have uh, Danny Martinez here this evening. Danny, would you like to speak at all on behalf of the application or? No. You're, not, you're not required to, but you're more than welcome to. We're on the Board of Liquor Controls. Oh, sorry. Don't mind me. We're on the Board of Liquor Controls. I heard Danny and I was like... Yeah. Hello, I'm Danny. Yeah. Um, I'm just here to apply for row name change. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, yeah. Danny. That's okay. I thought you were here for the catering permit, oh, so no. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I apologize. <laughs> um, it's going to be one of those nights. Yeah, it's going to be one of those nights. Um, so... Um, Typically, we would um, ask if there is any um, issues or um, from our police chief or other. Um, have you spoken with? Um, he's he's good with me. He's good. All right. Um, is there any questions from the board? No. Okay. So um, I would entertain a motion um, on the approval for the request of Black Diamond BBQ LLC. It's going to be held on 12-6-2024 uh, between 4.30 and 10. It's an MSI holiday party um, at 153 Stafford Avenue. And you're expecting about 150 people. So I would entertain a motion. I would move as, as the, just as read. Okay. And second? Second. Okay, Richard. So we have a motion made by George and a second by Richard. Is there any other discussion? And I won't ask you, Danny, if you have anything to say. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> All right. Um, so I will pull the board on the motion. Uh, George? Aye. Richard? Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I am I as well. So we will approve the uh, request for the catering permit. Um, I would also entertain a motion to adjourn the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I'll make a motion to adjourn the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Richard and a second by George. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, George? Aye. Richard? Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Okay, um, the, uh, the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control is now adjourned. All right, um, it is um, 5.36. Um, I'd like to call the select board meeting to order. Are there any agenda changes or additions? No. Okay, we have one set of minutes to approve of October 28th, 2024. It was an informational meeting. Um, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Okay, moved by George, second. 
I wasn't here, so I'm oh. going to I would myself. second it. Okay, Don. So I have a motion by George and a second by Don. Are there any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, uh, George? Aye. Richard? Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. Okay, I'm I, I am I as well, so the minutes to 1028 2024 are approved. Richard, did you, I, did you abstain? Abstain, sorry. Um, new business um, consideration of errors and omissions certificate. Um, when we are done uh, talking about this, um, if you notice on the application for errors and omissions, it will need um, signatures by at least the quorum of the select board. So don't leave tonight if it's approved to uh, sign that piece. Charlie Burnham, would you like to speak to this? Good evening. I'm Charlie Burnham. I'm one of your listers. And you have in front of you an errors and omissions certificate, which essentially is uh, correcting uh, some values that were misapplied at the reappraisal and they're quite uh, self-explanatory it's uh, matters that uh, came up and was brought to the attention of the appraiser by the property owners okay for just for the record <clears throat> the two um, that are being presented to us First one is RMN Properties LLC. Um, the um, change is from $23,000 to $12,300, so the difference is $10,700. The second is 165 Beacon Hill LLC. It's a change from $568,400 to $219,800, a difference of $348,600. Um, is there anything else, Charlie? That's it. Okay, I would entertain a motion uh, to approve the um, errors and omissions certificate. So moved. We have a motion by George. Second. Second by Richard. Is there any discussion from any board members? Um, I might ask that the, the reasons be read because I, I see there's some reactions out in the audience and I think it's reasonable for them to sure. understand why, it's, why we're doing what we're doing. Charlie, would you like to speak to it? Or? Yeah, at the reappraisal, um, as you know, all the values have to be plugged into the different categories. And evidently, in, in both cases, uh, they had incorrect values applied. And it was uh, particularly a clerical order. Um, and out of 2,600 properties in town, to have only two, I think, is quite astounding, quite, quite good. Um, the second one was a new build that they put in as, as a, a hundred percent when it was actually uh, at 16 percent complete and uh, the appraiser at the time put down that it was a hundred percent which was incorrect the manifest error okay. i suspect that helps people in the audience understand especially the second change charlie yeah. thank you yeah, yeah. Any yeah, other thank, you. thank you for that, George. I was going to ask for the same thing. Any other questions from the board? No. Okay. So we have a motion made uh, by George and a second by Richard. All those in favor of approving the errors and missions as presented? Aye. Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I am aye as well. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. The um, second um, part of our new business is the consideration of private road naming uh, Joseph's Street. So I think this is where I should call you again to speak to this. And thank you for uh, being so kind. No, it is. Um, so yeah, we just uh, basically wanted to change the road name from Horse Heaven Hill to Joseph Street. Um, we just felt that the name prior to felt kind of like a burial ground almost for horses. So 
That's why we kind of want to change it. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Danny Martinez. Okay, thank you. Um, this is um, a private road. Um, the uh, applicant's name is JC Management LLC. Um, their mailing address is Randolph Road. Um, this is a road located off of Park Street. Um, they would like to um, install the sign post with a sign location approved by the town themselves. Um, this will be a private road and not a public road. Um, does the board have any questions? George, do you have any questions? I do not. Richard? No. Don? I do not. Laura? Okay. So the only request I would have in the motion is, is that, um, and it's sort of been the trend here, is, is that uh, when you move to approve the private road naming of Joseph Street, um, that it's clear that it is a private road and not of town. Um, it, it, it will not be under any kind of town uh, maintenance or acceptance. Okay. Um, so I would entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move that uh, we accept the application of JC Management LLC for a private road main Joseph Street um, and that that uh, within that application uh, the sign location is approved by the town but installed by the uh, applicant and that it is understood that it is to be a private road without town services. Is that acceptable to the vice chair? Yeah, I think that is more than acceptable. Thank okay. You. Um, is there a second? I'll second. And it's, uh, and it's approved by Richard as well. So, <laughs> um, so we have a motion um, by George and a second by Richard. Um, is there any discussion? Yes. Do we need the motion to authorize the vice chair to sign on behalf of the board? Probably. Yes. Would you like to amend the motion yes. to authorize the vice chair to sign? And, and authorize the vice chair to sign on behalf of the board. Okay. Would you amend your? I'll amend my second. second. Okay. Thanks, Don. I just want to remind you there's a memo with suggested motions on the table for you. Thank you. Thanks. Look at that. Um, so with a uh, motion made and seconded, and is there any other further discussion? Laura, did you have anything that you'd like to add? Okay, um, I will pull the board. George? Aye. Richard? Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. Okay, I am aye as well. So it has been approved. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. So the um, third part of our new business is the MERP MERP uh, implementation grant award. Um, I'd like to invite um, town manager Brent Raymond to speak to this a little bit about the background and what we received. So we worked with uh, LCPC Planning Commission to apply for a MERP energy efficiency grant funding. Uh, we submitted a proposal for $137,214 plus an additional $9,010 for uh, required ADA improvements for, for use of the grant funds. Uh, we were successful in our request and um, in fact they have funded the award for $171,476.44 so um, above what our request was for uh, LCPC. Um, Tory specifically at LCPC assisted us with this uh, process um, was invaluable, and uh, she said that they might award at a at a higher amount based upon whatever calculations they make. So, just uh, very appreciative to LCPC and uh, consider that a win for the Morristown community. Um, the only, I guess the only question I would have, uh, Brent, did we ever get any clarification? Um, is there, is the additional money dedicated for any specific piece? No, there's a, there's a schedule uh, that lists out uh, which projects um, 
that schedule is in fact not correct. So we've notified the state asking them to, to update it. Um, and we're just pending their, their update. Okay. But uh, it does list um, the buildings, which is this town building, um, the police department, and um, what is missing is EMS. Okay. In the fire station, yes, thank you. Okay. So you'll uh, let us know when you have the final update from BG yeah. BGS. Okay, George, do you have any questions? I do not, other than a, a express my appreciation for the work that Brent has done and LCPC has done. It's nice to see this kind of a grant come in and it's going to save us in the long run with efficiencies and good for everybody. Thank you. Richard? I second that. That's fantastic. Thank you, Brent. Yep. I would third that as well. Don? You're muted. Thank you. Uh, thanks to the administration for pulling this all together. Thanks to Brent and Judy. All right, Laura. Uh, same thing. Thank you so much, Brent, and everybody who worked on it. it that's incredible to get that kind of money and um, get some work done on our buildings. I think this is uh, a shining example of having a full-time town manager administrator on board who um, brings to the table uh, a great amount of value in knowledge and um, the ability to work with other agencies because without this kind of effort and expertise, um, these are the kinds of things that this town has missed out on. And we're very fortunate to uh, be in the position that we're in, so thank you. Um, there's no action by the board that needs to take place on, on this MERP. This is uh, information for everybody. Um, this evening we have, uh, as a final new business, uh, consideration of revised work and the right-of-way policy. I think everybody has a copy of that at this point. Um, Brent, would you like to walk us through it? Sure. So we had a, a couple of, uh, we had a right-of-way policy and a road cut policy and pavement cut, cut application that was approved in September of 2011 by the, the select board. And then we had a town right away excavation and obstruction policy and application for right away permit that was approved in 2001. Um, <clears throat> one of my tasks as town managers is to go through all of our policies and ordinances and, and uh, update them. That's, that's a large task because we have a lot. Um, as part of my contract, uh, the former interim town manager was um, to be used as a project manager. So this is one of the items of, uh, that I asked her to work on. She did um, a lot of uh, the initial work. Our new t town highway uh, superintendent, Jordan, uh, came on board quickly and provided his insights and worked with uh, Todd Thomas to, to draft up a document. Um, I reviewed it and then asked Judy to, to perform her magic. She updated the form. Uh, we reviewed it again and uh, added a couple of, of things that, that I wanted to make sure that when people are, are cutting into our roadways that um, we not only approve it initially, but then we, we do a review of the work that was done to make sure that the quality of the, the pavement, et cetera, uh, was up to grade. So what you have in front of you is the, the finished product. And again, this up, updates um, a couple of different policies and forms. Uh, it removes the select board from needing to approve it. I think that's more efficient, uh, but it does require that um, planning and zoning uh, be notified and the highway superintendent uh, receive information review the information and then do a final inspection. So ultimately, um, after Jordan, Todd, um, all the way in on this, is it, do you issue the, the final permit or does it come from the superintendent? No, um, we discussed that. And I, I have enough confidence in the superintendent uh, that he, he knows more than, than I do. And, sure. uh, 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the loop, but don't need to sign off on it. Okay. Um, I think that the nice piece of this, um, first of all, there's the, a fee for this and a, and a recording fee, um, all which is non-refundable and payable to the town, which is a good benefit. I think that um, the post-inspection piece of the of this um, policy is, is important as well to make sure that everything um, has been done the way it should be. Um, you know, the fact that paved roads should not be left as gravel for more than 15 days um, is a good piece of this as well. Um, does anybody else on the board have any questions or comments? Richard? I think that this document does a good, good job at getting rid of some of the gray areas that were there before. Don, you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to limit background noises here. It's it's very nice to have this update, and it's the uh, the policy now seems very clear. It seems very clean, and uh, I'm glad to, that it's been vetted by Jordan, our new highway superintendent, uh, Todd, our zoning administrator, and and town administration, both uh, our past interim town manager and our current town manager, and Judy as well. So I, I, it's really nice to know that we've had a lot of eyes look at this. Thank you. Laura? Um, I just want to say it's great to be getting some of this stuff that's been cleaned up so we're not, you know, going back and forth all the time. So and uh, I'm thrilled to have Jordan on board to be overseeing this. Okay. Um, I want to acknowledge Carrie Johnson, and she's sort of been referred to as the former interim town manager, but Carrie Johnson um, was the um, contractor that helped administration and folks um, begin to put this together. So I just want to acknowledge that. Is there any thoughts from the public that would like to? Yep. Please, Jerry, um, please state your name. Uh, Jerry Throne, uh, I think this is a great improvement over uh, what we had, but I think uh, that there are a few things that I would suggest you uh, take a look at before you finalize it. Uh, one minor thing is uh, pavement markings. If pavement markings are disturbed, uh, I think they should be replaced as part of the pavement restoration. Uh, another thing that I that I saw and noticed jumped out at me is the uh, the insurance requirements. Uh, Five hundred thousand dollar limits, rather low compared to what other municipalities uh, and state agencies require of contractors who uh, excavate in the roadway. Uh, I would suggest that you take a look at the uh, uh, AOT. 2024 standard specifications for construction, section 10304. There's a lot of good information there, and uh, I can forward a copy of that to you if you'd like later. Uh, but certain things that I, that I think are important to have when it comes to insurance are uh, whether it's occurrence-based, whether personal injury is uh, uh, covered. Uh, the insurance should, should be for a period of time after the work's completed. It, at, at the AOT, they suggest three years. That may be too much for this. Uh, that is, you know, after the acceptance. Uh, named or additional insureds uh, to protect the town. You mean uh, indemnify and, people? And, and, you know, just have a, a full indemnity section. Uh, yeah. and, it, and it probably should be claims made as well. So I'm not an insurance expert, but I've been around it long enough to know to stay away from it. And uh, I, I think it might be a good idea to consult with an insurance expert uh, to uh, get the right language so that we have uh, you know, teeth that uh, uh, if the insurance is needed, that it'll, it'll be effective for, for what we need. All right, thank you, Jerry. Sure. Brent, any thoughts? Would you like to take some time to? Um... Yeah, I'll follow up with Jerry, uh, make sure that I got all the notes on this. I believe the insurance amounts are directly from um, passive insurance, but I will double check that. And I'll also take a look at the AOT section 103-104. 
Correct. Um, and uh, but I, I will confer with Tina and pass it directly to make sure that um, your added suggestions. I want to check into the three year, um, et cetera, that you, you brought up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three years, as I said, might be a little much for, you know, what we're trying to accomplish here, as opposed to a large construction project that VAOT, you know, oversees. Um, the, the thing about the, the insurance limits, I mean, you know, half a million dollars, you could have somebody, uh, you know, that damaged their car, uh, goes off the road, uh, gets hurt, uh, bodily injury, uh, you know, damages property and all that sort of stuff. And five hundred thousand dollars is nothing in today's uh, uh, claims market. <laughs> Brent, I don't know if you got Jerry's mention of being named as an additional insured. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Alex. Uh, one question: um, What do you do if there's a violation of the policy? I was just wondering because. I do, for example, with interim measures where there's been um, digging in the paved area and there's sort of an interim situation before that's fully repaved. Um, sometimes worry a little bit about my tires. I was wondering, you know, how do you, how do you decide they haven't paved that back in um, fast enough? And what do you do once you've decided it's not been done fast enough? And also just following on the comments um, on the insurance amount, I was part of running a 5K in Montpelier recently and just with people running around, no heavy machinery or anything, we were required to have a $1 million uh, policy. So I think it would make sense potentially to require more. Is there a hand up on That's this? Laura. Yes. Laura? Um, I, I was actually going to um, suggest that, yeah, half a million dollars is nothing these days. I've never even done an event that insured for less than a million, and most are up at two million now, um, and with the indemnification. Uh, um, so I actually would like to make a motion that we table this until we have um, time to do some further research on this. Right, Laura, I, I don't think that we need a motion. I think okay. by not taking any action at this point, we'd allow okay. the manager to uh, come back to us with any okay. suggested changes in a new document if seem prudent at this point. I will just say that, um, you know, in my own business in Waterbury, we had a million dollar minimum uh, liability with, um, with an aggregate amount above and beyond that. So um, I think that that's Jerry's point, particularly with that is um, as well taken in the um, extended period beyond a completion date as well. Um, to Alex's question though, in terms of enforceability. Um, I'm not involved, I've been involved in any enforceability. Um, I can just use like Portland Street this summer, which was a Morrisville Water and Light project. Um, and it took months to get a paving company in because of uh, all the FEMA related work. Um, but I will, I'll further research that and, you know, perhaps put the specific enforcement um, options that we have available to us within the, the actual documentation and, and application I mean at the end of the day I mean the contract is signed by both parties um, with the intention to fulfill the contract as um, as agreed upon um, you know uh, litigation doesn't fix a, a non paved piece but I think that the intent of the road policy is clear um, and the uh, fact that we have a superintendent now that will um, both agree to take a look at it beforehand and after um, will um, will um, uh, you know certainly aid and abet that process. So um, 
Um, Brent, you can take a look at it, um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, litigation may be our only end game uh, in terms of not fulfilling the uh, agreed upon contract. Jerry. So if I remember correctly, uh, the language uh, states something to the effect of uh, that if uh, there are other things that need to be done after the initial uh, filling in, uh, that the contractor will have, have to perform that work. So it, it leaves that within your hands. But you might consider, if you're really concerned, about a bond. Uh, and and mm -hmm. another, another a aspect of this thing of filling them in too quickly is that they settle. No matter how well you compact it, and uh, here in this in this specification it says one foot lifts. Well, unless you're going to have an inspector there watching the one foot lifts. It's a one inch lift, right? No, no it's, it's one foot. foot. One foot. One okay, foot. I thought it was one inch. Thank you. you know, there's no such thing as one inch lifts. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the belt. You're talking about the backfill, not the, the filling, pavement. Filling in of the uh, of of the trench. Right. Okay. So, so they will settle no matter how well you do it. Uh, so it's just something that, you know, that might want to consider addressing that aspect that you really don't want permanent paving put in these things until probably at least six months after the work's been completed. And in the winter time, the asphalt plants shut down. So you're not going to get uh, any asphalt. Probably be able to get some temporary asphalt in there. And I think that it was something that uh, was also in the language that said that you may have to uh, put in a temporary uh, asphalt paving and then come back and put the permanent stuff in. Great, thank you. Are there any other comments, suggestions? Okay, so we will revisit this at a later meeting. Thank you, Brent. Is there any old business? Then um, we need to approve our warrants. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the warrants. I make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. second, second. So we have a motion by Richard and a second by George. Um, is there any discussion by any board members? Don? I, I'm not there to see the warrants. I'm going to abstain on this one. Okay, Laura? I'm abstaining because I haven't seen them. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. George? Richard? Aye. And I'm an I as well, so the motion carries. Is there any community comments this evening? Yep, Jamie. Uh, James Brewster, two, uh, two quick items. Uh, the first one, um, a request, uh, which I brought forth uh, previously, uh, which is uh, could the town manager perhaps uh, provide uh, an update uh, at every board meeting just of some of the items that, uh, that they've been working on over the last period of time. Uh, I know I had asked this when uh, the previous interim town manager was here and it didn't happen then. Um, so I'm just gonna throw that request out there again. Um, and secondly, um, I noticed that the town has applied for party status uh, in the Act 250 process for the industrial park across from uh, the airport. Uh, I found that interesting because I haven't seen in my time uh, that the uh, town uh, go for party status, although they have every right to. This is the first time I recall seeing that take place. Um, so I'm curious. Uh, if there is any intent behind that or what uh, what the town plans to do with that party status. Ben, would you like to speak to that? Uh, so statutorily, municipalities um, are allowed to have uh, uh, party status and it was recommended to me by the uh, town planner. And I double checked with a couple of other resources who also recommended that uh, essentially the town for any major projects uh, just file for, for status. Um, 
in the Act 250 process, there's no other reason than to just uh, protect, uh, protect town's interest for for any major project. And, and from where I came from, that was <clears throat> that was status quo. Is that, you yeah. know, when we had Ben and Jerry's Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, um, yeah. the town was part. I, of I'm just asking because of the time right. that I've been involved and been around, I haven't seen the town apply for that. Yeah. I often thought that it should, sure. um, and this is the first time I saw it, so I was curious. And this, this is probably another example of having a full-time town manager on board and yeah. ten, attending to attending to our business in a much more professional way. Absolutely. Are there any other uh, community comments? Anybody on the board? Anybody on Zoom? Okay. Um, our upcoming meeting schedule. Um, on Monday, December 2nd, um, we have a select board in a Morrisville um, Development Fund joint meeting um, at 5.30. Uh, select board meeting will to continue following. Um, on Wednesday, December 4th, we have a select board workshop. Um, this has been rescheduled from November 20th. It's going to go from 4 to 9 p.m. This is um, a budget workshop for the board to take a look at what the manager has going to will will be presenting to us in a discussion for the board to um, see if there's any changes amendments or approvals that we want to move forward with i assume that this is the first of several meetings that we're going to be working through so this is not a, intended to be a one and done um, meeting in terms of budget um, but this is the beginning of the process to get board input <coughs> on on um, where we go in terms of March and a presentation uh, on January for the public and then March vote. Um, and then we have a regular scheduled meeting on December 16th at 5.30. Is there anything else? No. Okay. So did you read, Chris, that we have a select board meeting after the joint meeting? The I did, but yeah. I didn't hear that, thank you. Yeah, thank you. yeah the select board meeting to continue following, yeah. I said, yeah. So, um, is there any other business that needs to come before the board? Then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, George has moved and Richard has second. The motion to adjourn. George? Aye. Richard? Aye. Don? Aye. Laura? Aye. All right, thank you uh, for your patience and my ability to uh, uh, chair this meeting. Um, Don, your big shoes to fill. You did so a great thank job. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you.